Letting go is the hardest part Trying to find peace of mind To seize the day I'm living my life Working on me Doing things right Leading not to my own understanding But I'm following God's Blueprint for singles Blueprint for singles Coach V. Latrell, the dating mastermind, and I teach Christian singles how to date with the master in mind. I am so glad that you have joined me tonight. Listen, I want to talk about springing forth. I just love the spring, not just because of the colors, but I feel like it's a time that we just have the ability to get rid of the old and put in the new, all of the old leaves they fade away and then you start seeing the springing of the leaves. And I remember as a little girl, that saying was April showers brings May's flowers. Lots of times when we're in a relationship, we cry out our eyes because we have been hurt. We might feel that we are not loved, but there is the sunshine that will come. And that is Christ being the center of your life. And once you get Christ within, then you begin to blossom. They buried me, but they didn't know I was a seed. So the more dirt that you throw on me, the more I'm going to grow. Even flowers grow through concrete. Amen. So listen, so we're going to go to first Chronicles 16 and 11 that says to seek the Lord and his strength seek his face continually. We have to remember to constantly seek after God. You know, the same way when we're in relationships, we're like, I'm checking for him or I'm checking for her. You need to check for God. And the way that you check for God, you get to know him the same way you would entertain someone you get into knowing you're dating and collecting data. Get to know God. Find out what it is that he likes. Find out what he adores about you, how he feels about you. Spend some time with God because when you do that, you begin to fall in love with Jesus. And as cliche as it might sound, and some people say, oh, well, you happy about being single because you love the Lord and this and that. Absolutely, I do. But you have to get to a place to where you see God as your partner in everything it is that you do. God can be anything that you need him to be. He can be your father. He can be your mother. He can be your sister, your friend, your cousin, your brother, whatever it is that you need. God, allow God to be just that because he is infinite. He is everything to everybody, but you got to get to know him. You got to spend time with him the same way we spend time with others. Get to know the Lord. And I guarantee you, you will, you can't help but fall in love with God. Sometimes I remember growing up as a child in the church, they used to say, when I think about the goodness of Jesus, I didn't understand that when I was a kid, but as I grew older in my becoming who God designed me to be, when I think back, on the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Not only does my soul cry out, but my heart panteth after him. Like I chase after God because the more I get to know him, he's just mm, mm, good. Like I, the more I get to know about him, I want to spend more time with him. I want to seek the Lord. I want to sup with him. I do everything with God because I love God. I love God from the bottom of my heart and I do that through service. I do that through obeying his word. Amen. So when you get to that place when you can love God and spend some time with him, like he might everything. That's, that's me right there. Yeah, that's him. That's, that's, that's me. You know what I mean? That's how you feel because I, I, I've been in relationships. I, I've, I've been divorced before and I thought that I love someone so much, but when I love God, and I got to know him, it's a love that no one on this earth can give you. Even as much as I love my spouse, even as much as I love my own flesh and blood, the love of the Lord is set up differently. It's, it's, he, he is just that man that, can I brag on God for a little bit? Let me just brag on him for a little bit. He is the one that gives you life. It's because of him that you can see. It's because of him that you can hear. It's because of him that you can do, move your fingers around, blink your eyes. It's because.
because of him. It's not because of the alarm clock that woke you up. It's not. It's not by your power, not by your own might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. And so I, I welcome you to spring forth into God, spring forth into him. Just imagine yourself. Listen, when the Bible says that we are his temple, we really are. God resides within us. And because he resides within us, we should be able to govern our thoughts. Now, our thoughts ain't going to be like God's, but our thoughts would be better behaviors, better decisions, not making this. And I'm not going to call it mistakes because mistakes ain't mistakes. We know what we're doing when we make decisions to do wrong, but we make better decisions when we're with God. No, we don't. We're not sinless, but we do sin less with God. Amen. So, so let's talk a little bit about, um, our faith, right? So when we talk in terms of, um, our, our exercising our faith, faith is what helps us to navigate our healing. We, we can't see what's ahead of us, but you know, when you trust somebody, you know, when you trust someone, you say, okay, somebody come, come to work on time. You already know that person will already be there, but what about trusting the Lord? Even when things seem to be unfavorable that happened to you, the relationship that went awry, you have to be in a position and love God enough and trust God enough to say, Lord, I don't understand it, but I trust you. That is the kind of love and the kind of faith that God desires to have. Not that kind of uh, uh, relationship with God where we say, God, I can't stand you. God, I hate you. Why you put me in this situation? And I'll be just straight up because sometimes we as Christians, we paint a pretty picture to where people feel like we don't, we don't measure up to being the, being the, the chosen one that God has, has called us to be. When I lost my son at five and a half months pregnant, I was upset with God. Matter of fact, I was more than upset. I was angry at God. Didn't want to hear no scripture and you better not pray for me. That's how I felt. But that was the trick of the enemy to get me to feel as though God didn't love me. But because of the prayers of the righteous, I went for months not talking to my own family because the enemy had me fooled. He had me in a hole. But because of those prayers, one day I woke up. One day I sprung forth. I didn't know what was going on, but I knew that somebody had to be praying for me. Because God turned that thing around and everything that we go through, it is for our good. So when God extracts people from our life, when he removes people from our life, don't go running behind them. When that flower done died, let it die. Don't put water on it. Don't go try to replant it. Don't resurrect what God done killed. Huh? No, we, we, we gotta, we gotta get to a place to where we trust God and what's happening in our life because nothing that is happening happens by chance. God does what he does for a reason. And sometimes most of the time is to grow us. But at the end of the day, God always gets the glory in everything because the more he puts us through, the more we are stronger in him because there's some stuff that I done been through that I say plenty of times, if it wasn't for God, I don't know where I would be because we know God, God, he put us, through, especially when he take us through things to where we know it's God because we got through that. Our carnal minds might think we're not able to get through some things, but with God, all things are possible. So nothing you've experienced is a mistake. I'm here to tell you, it's not. It is all a part of the plan, even your bad decisions. God knew you was going to make that bad decision. He knew that. But that thing, that bad decision that you made, it's other people making that same mistake or making those same bad decisions. What can you do to help them? So anyway, let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 17 through 18. And it reads, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, said the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you and will be a father unto you. Yet you shall be my sons and my daughters. You got to check your circle. 
You got to check the people who you around. See, there was a time where when God began to remove people from my life, even friends that I've been knowing for decades, I started feeling bad when people started saying, Val, you changed. I didn't want to be the one known as the one that changed. But God had to show me that daughter, I'm changing you because I'm elevating you. So as you continue to elevate yourself in Christ and get to know God, it is inevitable that your circles will change. If you in Christ and your circle still the same when you was out there clubbing, you might want to check yourself. Because the Bible tells us how can two walk together unless they agree. So if I don't agree with clubbing and having sex and drugging and drinking, how am I hanging and sitting up around you? Because what what happened is, is either I might consume you, but if it's too many of y'all, y'all might have the ability to pull me back in. So it's okay to be different. It's okay to stand out and be separate. The Bible, I just read 2 Corinthians. The Bible says, come out from among them. It's okay to walk this, this, this thing alone. In the carnal mind, it looks like we're alone. But with God, we're not, we're never alone. Never. So don't, don't be discouraged about that. But you, you, you definitely want to, uh, check your circles because you need to be amongst people who, who accept your transparency. In those moments that you're being vulnerable and really expressing how you feel, you don't want somebody that's going to shut you down or try to change the narrative to make you, girl, what you thinking? You, what you talking about? You don't need to be around them. You need to be around people that you can be vulnerable around that will not be judgmental, but that will speak to your spirit and empower you. Not go pick up the phone and call, girl, let me tell you what happened. Girl, let me tell you what Val said. Let me tell you what she going through. That's not the people you need to be around. So definitely check your circle and don't be afraid to come out from among them. Because once you come out from among them and God starts to doing some things in your life and he begins to spring you forward, God will begin to put other people in your life that will help to continue to catapult you. But as long as you know that statement, oh, they holding me down. Yeah, they really holding you down. You can't move forward in God until that circle change. That's not to say all your friends going to go away. The ones that God is intended for you to be in your life, they will be there. But the ones that are not, let them go. Okay. Just some little tips to consider when, when springing forward, consider those things that you don't want to commensurate. You know, like when you go to a graduation, you commensurate in the years uh, that you, you've been in school, your academics, whether you are cum laude, summa cum laude. You know, be be mindful of those things that you, you're commensurating in your mind. It's not always easy to move forward. On it. We can't do it on our own. I'll just tell you that. You, you can't. And I'm telling you because I done lived it. I've tried to do it on my own and I failed every time. But as I got closer to Christ, things became a little bit easier. So what I mean by not commensurating those thoughts and feelings, don't replay that thing that didn't work out. Don't replay what he said or what she said or what he did and what she, what she did. Don't keep reliving that because the more you relive it, the more that it takes space in your heart. Deal with it and move on. Okay. Another tip is, is to, to, to be content. Paul tells us in the Bible that we are to be content in whatever state we're in, even singleness, right? And can I tell you something? God has you exactly where he wants you to be. Everything that you have, God has you with everything he thinks you should have right now. The destiny that God has stored up for you, it belongs to you. He's not going to give it to anybody else. It belongs to you, but it's up to you to go and get it. It's up to you to level yourself up. To spring forth because see God, he can help us, but there are some things that you have to do too. The Bible tells us that faith without work is dead. You can't just say, oh, I'm hoping and praying and wishing and this and that and manifesting, but you ain't putting no work. That's, that's not life. You got to work for this thing. So let's, let's keep that in mind about being content and the more content that we are, the more gratitude that we show God, God, I appreciate what you've done for me. 
God, I appreciate the home that I live in. God, I appreciate the job that I have. God, I appreciate my children. God, I appreciate the ground that I walk on. When God sees that you have a heart of gratitude, he'll bless you with more. But be careful because the more that God gives you, the more he's requiring of you. The next tip is, is that we must forgive. Forgiveness doesn't mean that uh, uh, what happened to us was okay. It doesn't mean that uh, uh, we, we, we just going to bypass it. But the greatest example of forgiveness is what Christ did. They whipped him. They spit on him. They did everything to discourage him, tell him he was not a child of God. They made a mockery of him. And what did he do? Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. That was the greatest testament. God didn't, he didn't, he didn't resurrect himself with rage or anger in his heart because he could have killed all of them. He could have slain them all right there while he was on the cross, but he didn't do that because he knew the love that he had for us and that he wanted to put us on this earthly realm. God is, he's amazing. He is just so smart. He is beyond smart. There's no word even describe who God is, right? Because God put us on this earth so that he can see himself manifested through us. We are the light of the world. So because he knew he had to do all of these things, he knew that he wouldn't be able to walk the earth. He put us here. And the moment you realize what your purpose is, you begin to walk different. You begin to look different. The Bible tells us that we are in the world, but we're not of the world. All the things that we see going on around us, the pandemic, the killings, social injustice, all of that, it's happening all around us. It's almost as if, if you would just imagine a bunch of stuff just flying all around you in a circle, in a whirlwind, but you stand still, you stand in peace because you know who you serve. So we're in the world, but we're not of the world. The only way you can have that mindset is through Christ. So when you realize what your purpose is, you walk in it. I, I remember when I started on this journey in my springing forth and in, 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 in evolving in Christ, people that I've been knowing for years saying, man, Val, you look different. You look brighter. And I started, I was saying, I'm like, no, I don't. But when I started looking back at pictures, there was parts of moments in my life and years where even my skin was darker. But when God came in, it's like the, uh, the light just illuminates. That's nothing because of me. That's not because of the color foundation I got on. Don't get it twisted. It's not because of the highlights or this bright yellow shirt I got on. But it's about Christ that's in me. So when people see us, and we claim that we are Christians. There should be some light. No, there's not a halo over my head, but there should be a difference in us. So when we spring forward, there is a difference. Okay. What God is saying to you today is that he's desiring for you to be free. He loves you so much. And in the book of Jeremiah, he tells us that the plans that he has for us is to prosper us not to harm us. He has an expected end for you. I pray that this, this show, this message has been for you and has touched you in a way in which you're able to think about some of the behaviors. Not just say that, you know, we unbothered because we sometimes we are bothered. Sometimes we are bothered about what has happened to us. But we got to deal with that thing. Because allow, just if you would just imagine God scooping out all of that hurt out of your heart, let him, let him work on you a little bit. If you got to lay prostrate, lay prostrate, cry out to God. I didn't know what that meant. But sometimes when you, when you're doing that surrender, surrender, you have to constantly surrender to Christ because what you plan to do ain't, might not be what God plans for you. So you have to surrender to him. And if you got to surrender on your belly, do it. Life is so much better with Christ. I implore you to spring forth in this season. 
Don't be bound by what has happened to you in your past. Don't be bound by what is happening in the world today. But be bound in Christ. Allow him to elevate you. And I promise you, you will spring forth. I love you with the love of the Lord. And there is absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing you can do about it. Be blessed. Letting go is the hardest part. Trying to find peace of mind to seize the day.